Meta, Meta stock is the main focus of today's video, folks. Obviously, huge move after hours, about 11 or 12% move. I'm going to go through the numbers in this video, going to go through the earnings, show you everything that I thought was good, everything that I thought was bad in regards to these earnings. I'm going to tell you what my plans are with the stock. Am I going to plan on cashing some shares tomorrow? Am I going to plan on buying more? Everything like that we'll discuss, okay? We're also going to talk about Tesla stock toward the end of this video, and also we'll talk about Palantir stock at the end of this video because those are two stocks that haven't been doing so well, right? Meta's been absolutely tearing it up, but those stocks have obviously been having a little trouble here recently. Uh, Tesla, I think, was down another 4% here today, okay? So I want to give you my updated thoughts on kind of Tesla and what's going on there. But yeah, Meta's the main focus of obviously today's video with their earnings being out and it being the biggest position for me in the public account. By the way, if you're wondering, who are these folks over here? Uh, we got a new member in the seven-figure uh, club hall of fame here and a new member in the six-figure hall of fame. So congrats to those folks and congrats to everybody that's been hitting six figures, seven figures here recently in the market okay so big uh should be a great day obviously in meta stock tomorrow for all current shareholders for folks that maybe haven't built out your position all the way you want you know, tomorrow's not an ideal situation, right? If anything, you want this stock to go lower. Uh, somebody like myself, I feel like I've built my position as well as I could have, uh, buying the stock so heavily and taking advantage of the discounts in 22. So I, I'm uh, okay with Meta going up. I'm not okay with Amazon going up. I'm actually hoping Amazon goes down on earnings because that one I'm still building my position and plan to for the next six plus months, okay? So in regards to some good stuff here, okay? First thing is this is family daily active people. What this means, the simplest way I could put this is this is, an individual using at least one of uh, Facebook's apps each day, Meta's apps each day. That could be Facebook, that could be Facebook Messenger, that could be Instagram, or that could be WhatsApp, okay? So you gotta use at least one of those. So it basically went from 2.87 billion people using one of their apps each and every day, right? to now over 3 billion people. They have crossed a 3 billion mark now at this point in time, which is, you know, at some point in time, they're not gonna be able to grow when it comes to more people, but somehow they still put up these numbers with slight growth, it's insane, right? This is uh, somebody using at least one of their apps once a month. They went from 3.64 billion people in a Q1 of 22 to now 3.81 billion people, approaching 4 billion people using at least one of their apps once a month here. This arguably is the most important slide of them all in regards to Meta right now, okay? What do I think about this? Well, first off, this is great news, okay? They actually grew revenue. Analysts thought revenue was gonna go down in this quarter. They thought it was gonna be such a bad quarter that revenue was gonna go down. And uh, actually, revenue went up, and it went up decent, okay? Uh, over $1 billion up year over year. They did just under $27 billion in revenue in the same quarter last year. They did over $28 billion in revenue in this quarter, okay? And do keep in mind, most of that new Instagram blue check, that should uh, ultimately start coming in the second quarter in terms of real revenue uh, recognition from that new uh, business line, which is actually going to be a quite a quite a big number from what my understanding, okay? As far as the rest of the world, they went from $2.9 billion to $3.2 billion in revenue, rest of world. That's strong in terms of Asia, Asia Pacific, 5.6 billion they went from to 5.8. You know, in, in this environment we're in right now, I'll take these numbers, okay? Now, the one down spot was Europe. Europe went from $3.6 billion to, six, or excuse me, $6.3 billion to $6.2 billion in terms of the European market. Europe has gotten hit, from my understanding, a little worse uh, from inflation than even us in the United States have. So that's my opinion on probably why things are even a little bit weaker in Europe right now. As far as the U.S. and Canada, nice growth, actually. I mean, this is impressive. Very impressive. Considering the, the weakness in the operating environment, to put up this sort of growth in U.S. and Canada is actually, I'm impressed, man. From $12 billion in the same quarter last year to, you know, they're up about $700 million year over year on a quarterly basis. That, I'll take that. I'll gladly take that. So overall, when it comes to revenue, you know, in this environment, I'm happy. If this was some sort of very hot business environment where, you know, you saw all these companies reporting 10, 20, 30% revenue growth, I wouldn't be that happy with these. But I can tell you in this operating environment right now, I am happy with those numbers out of meta. I do want to see them accelerate their growth in the future years. And I believe they will do that. Okay. Now, in terms of the metaverse, right? This is something Facebook, you know, meta is spending a fortune on right now, Zuckerberg, right? This is bad. Okay. Revenue went from 534 million in Q1 21 to then almost 700 million dollars in Q1 22 to they only did 339 million dollars of Reality Labs revenue in this latest quarter, okay? That's awful. Absolutely awful, okay? Now what that shows me, 
That shows me that their newest product is a flop, which does not come as any surprise to me. I expected that product to flop. When I saw kind of the specs, when I saw the reviews and the price point of fifteen hundred dollars, I was like, "This is this isn't gonna this isn't gonna do well." Okay, and um, sure enough, they've dropped price by five hundred dollars. I believe you can get one of those MetaQuest Pros on Amazon or from Meta themselves for I think nine hundred ninety nine dollars now at this point in time. So they dropped five hundred dollars off the price. But at the end of the day, it's still too too high of a price for I think most folks to consider something like that at this point in time. Maybe in five or ten years, people don't mind spending fifteen hundred dollars or even $1,000 on one of these headsets. But right now, it's not, we're not, the, the technology is not quite there. The applications aren't quite there to justify spending that sort of money unless somebody really just wants to be on the forefront of technology. Now, the good news is there's something big coming here for Meta, okay? And in my opinion, this is going to be very big for Meta, and you're going to see a massive boost up in their uh, Reality Labs revenue here. And that is... Quest 3. I, this product will probably be shown off, I would say, either late this summer or early fall time in terms of the Quest 3. This should be a headset that comes under $500 and this should do very well in the marketplace. I mean, very well. This should be by far and away their number one selling headset they've ever had. And I think it's going to be by quite a large margin. And this should be the first, I think, I think this will be the first headset to be considered by more of the masses than let's just call it previous uh, headsets. Do I think they're going to put up some, you know, crazy volume, like, you know, I don't know, selling a hundred million of these or something like that. No. Okay. No. But in terms of by far and away, their clearest, biggest success they've ever had, I think this is going to be it. There's no doubt in my mind in regards to that. And there's another big thing that's going to help Meta in a massive way. Okay. And that is Apple is getting ready to launch their mixed reality headset. Now, if you don't know that much about business, let's say, for instance, right? You're not that experienced. You might say, wait a minute, Apple's going to come in this market. That's got to be bad for Meta, right? No, 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 no. We're going to play a little chess here, okay? If we know one thing, we know Meta is not good at marketing uh, physical products, okay? And getting excitement around something like that. It's not that sort of company. They don't have that DNA, what is Apple better at than any other company maybe in the history of mankind? It's generating hype and excitement about a physical product, okay? That's what Apple does. And so I can tell you, Apple coming in this space legitimizes a space finally, and this is the best thing ever for Meta, okay? Because Meta needs help in generating buzz and talk and conversation around this space. And they can't do it by themselves because this company doesn't know how to market like that. Apple does know how to market like that. They are the best. They are the creme de la creme. So the bottom line is when uh, the day Apple steps in this space and, and announces a product is the greatest day ever for Meta when it comes to a Meta first opportunity. Because then all of a sudden the masses have to at least start to consider about, oh, what's this thing, you know, Apple is up to here, okay? And so I don't really care if somebody buys an Apple headset or a Meta headset in the short term. The bottom line is we just got to generate more excitement in the space. That's the bottom line with that, okay? I don't know if the smartphone space ever would have taken off as big and as quickly as it did if it wasn't for Apple. Just to put it quite simply like that in my personal opinion. So this is, this is phenomenal news in, in my personal opinion in regards to this, okay? So that's coming as far as that goes, okay? Net income. As far as net income for this company, we finally uh, have some, some good news on the net income front, okay? Profitability. We're, if you look, you, we bottomed out as far as net income goes right around Q3, uh, about $4.3, $4.4 billion there. And we've kind of been on an uptick since and uh, now at about $5.7 billion in net income this latest quarter. Expect much bigger upticks in the second quarter, the third quarter, and the fourth quarter of this year in regards to net income. And I'll, I'll show you some of my EPS numbers and whatnot here in just a moment. Uh, but yeah, so things are on the right track. Obviously, they still had a ton of one-time costs because of all the firing they're doing and restructuring that's kind of hitting the company right now. But yeah, I, I am expecting a second quarter to be actually much stronger, third quarter and fourth quarter. So the net income should just continue to see this chart go up and up and up over this next, uh, let's call it a few quarters here, which is obviously good news, okay? Now, free cash flow reconciliation in terms of this, right? So basically they're taking their net cash provided by operating activities, which was around $14 billion. And then you're taking, you're minusing the basically property, plant, and equipment of about $6.8 billion or so, right? And also taking out the principal payments on finance leases that puts us at about $7 billion roughly of free cash flow here, right? Which 
is incredible. And this is another number that I'm expecting to grow, grow, grow as this year kind of ticks on. So now for Meta, the, the money printer started up again, okay? The money printer has started back up at Meta, and that's great news. We bottomed out this baby, Q3 of 22, at less than $200 million of free cash flow. What a complete disaster, okay? Complete disaster for Meta. So the money printer is getting back rolling here, and I'm definitely very thrilled about that, okay? Now, in terms of my projections for the rest of this year for diluted earnings per share, here's what I have. Okay, so obviously they just did 220 in this latest quarter. I had them doing 275 in Q2 for this company. I had them doing three dollars of EPS in Q3, and I have them doing 350 for the fourth quarter of this year. And I do believe that in 2024 they're going to have a real possibility of getting to record, uh, like literally record uh, earnings per share again. Okay, I don't think they're going to hit record earnings per share in any quarters. So I'm not expecting that this year, but I am expecting them to get on the right track and put themselves in a position where 2024 they actually hit records. And we know Zuckerberg, he says, is all about efficiency. But really, you know, he calls this the year of efficiency. But when you listen to him on the conference call, it really sounds like he wants to run this business lean for years to come in the, go in the future, like years to go in the future. So when you think about it from that context, this should be a money printer for a long time to go in the future here, okay? So where things get really, really intriguing, right, is obviously they just beat nicely in terms of earnings per share here, right? They also beat on revenue. But they're, the, the analysts, I think their numbers are too low. I think they're going to have to bring up these estimates. They're at 241. I'm at 275. And that's where I think they're going to come in at. And with obviously uh, meta beating analyst expectations by 17 cents this quarter, analysts are going to have to bring up this number. And so I think they'll probably bring their numbers up to 250 to 260 range. And I think that's still going to be too low because I think ultimately you're going to do around 275 for next quarter in terms of the June quarter there. So that should be intriguing. Analysts as of right now are at about a little less than $10 of EPS. I think worst case scenario, worst case scenario for meta, and this is worst case scenario, they do 1050 in 2023, but I think they could ultimately do as much as $12, $12 of EPS or so in 2023. So nonetheless, folks, I believe analysts are going to bring up these numbers too. I wouldn't be surprised if within a month you come and look at these numbers and analysts have moved them to 1050. Don't be surprised at that at all, okay? Or even 1075 or something like that. And when analysts have to start upgrading what they expect for EPS, they're going to have to upgrade the stock and the stock price as well in terms of what they think is going to happen there. And obviously, when analysts after analysts are climbing over themselves to obviously up their numbers and then up stock price uh, targets, you know, ultimately it gets reflected in the stock price as well. So, you know, I, I would say don't expect Meta stock to stop anytime soon of kind of this upward momentum here, okay? No. It's the biggest position for me in the public count, right? Which, you know, is almost a $400,000 position, $381,000 as of today, right? Tomorrow, as of the open, we should be up $30,000 to $50,000 on the open tomorrow, right? It could be up more than that. I don't know. We'll see. But I'm expecting like a $30,000 to $50,000 move in this one tomorrow. Now, am I interested in selling this one at all, okay? And my answer to that is absolutely not, okay? <laughs> absolutely not. The bottom line is Meta's trading at, let's say, roughly a 20-ish forward P right now. Why would I sell a company that owns three of the most important platforms in the world? Obviously, Facebook, Facebook Messenger. You can make an argument for, for if you want to say Facebook and Facebook Messenger are two separate things, right? WhatsApp and Instagram. You can't, I can't even conceive of selling a company like that at a 20p with a, you know still a founder who's getting into the prime of his business career. Remember, Zuckerberg's just barely entering the prime of his business career, right? Which the prime of your business career is usually between about age 40 and about age 60. He's just entering that age. He was just a baby, you know, when this company went public. He's just entering the prime of his career. And he doesn't seem like he's leaving Meta anytime soon. So with a balance sheet in the place it is, with this sort of business model, and think about the, the metaverse opportunity, right? VR, AR, as well as AI opportunity. Let's say, let's say the artificial intelligence, the, the, or excuse me, the, the AR and the VR doesn't work out, the metaverse opportunity. Let's just say that, which I think there's a low probability that I think there's only about a 25% chance that would happen. I think there's a 75% chance they're gonna be super successful in this market. So let's say the 25% probability comes in, and let's say a year from now, two years from now, like, you know what, we're not gonna spend any more on this, we're not gonna do this, we can't do this, whatever. Okay, they're spending over a billion dollars a month on this. So if they were to cut that out, that's over a billion dollars a month straight to the bottom line. So this is a no-lose situation. 
if they, they, if they get the technology right and they can obviously grow this into a massive business, which I think, like I said, I think is about 75% probability they do do that, right? We're talking about this is the next multi-hundred billion dollar opportunity. So great, they all capture that. And if it doesn't work out, then it's just massive amount more money to the bottom line because they can cut out all that expense and all those employees that are working on that right now, right? So when you think about this from that context, I mean, it, it, it's, it's a win either way. So for me, in regards to Meta, not even a company I can think about selling at this point in time. No, no, no. Okay. Very, very happy with this one. Very happy overall with those earnings. And um, yeah, I'm not expecting, I'm expecting actually strengthening stock price throughout the year. Could I see Meta at 300 plus by the end of the year? I think it's actually a possibility. I really do. Um, I really, really do. I mean, I don't know what could even get in its way, even if there's more recessionary talk. I mean, we're already in a slower business environment at, anyways. And with their cost-cutting measures and what that's going to have play out, I think their net income's headed in the right direction no matter what as the year ticks on. Never mind if consumer sentiment goes a little better. Never mind if real wages could start increasing, which I think we've had 24 straight months of real wages being down. Imagine if those just start getting in a better place versus where they've been for the past 24 months. What, what's going to happen in that scenario? So these are all things I consider. So Meta can't even consider selling out. Okay. Tesla, my Tesla. So this one is bleeding for us at the moment. Bled another $11,000 in this one here today, down over 4% in regards to good old Meta. All right. So, you know, obviously you, the, the past is a past in regards to uh, Tesla. We've been doing phenomenal in that stock for the longest time, right? But there's a few interesting things that are going on here, right? The first one is this stock's trading at about a 31 forward P right now. And once again, this depends on if you agree with these numbers or not. This is just analyst expectations, okay? I can tell you that's not expensive for a stock like Tesla that has the sort of growth this company has. To be trading at something in the 30s, it's not high. It's not high at all, okay? This is actually a good value. Tesla's a good value at the moment. Two years ago, when there was a trillion dollar market cap, it was not a good value. Today, at you know less than a half trillion dollar market cap or so, it's actually a really good value, okay? Really good value as of today. And the lower it goes, the, the better the value is. Now, there's a huge mistake that's happening right now in regards to Tesla. People have seen the, the obviously, you, some would call it a price war that Elon Musk is after right now. And they think it's because of competition. And no, it's not. It's not even close to being competition. It just usually shows me like people might not be too aware of what's going on, okay? And, but Tesla's always had this thing about, oh, you know, it's the Tesla killer and, you know, it's going to take out Tesla and this and that, right? And I saw this a post on Twitter last night. I absolutely love this. This is from 2015. It's the Tesla killer. GM's to unveil long-range electric car, right? And this was supposed to be what took out Tesla. And you just got to understand, you're going to continue to hear about these stories until finally they give up on the Tesla killer. And you got to understand, actually, remember we talked about Apple earlier, right? Apple's gone through this in the past. There was a time period when everything was the iPhone killer. Everything was the Apple killer. And then it never happened, obviously. It never came to fruition. And uh, Apple just continued its upward kind of move there. And so just understand, they're going to keep talking about this. It's the Tesla killer. It's, uh, you know, and it's just, it's all a bunch of BS. They don't even understand, like, you know, getting one of these cars to market, doing it profitably, and doing it in scale is, is I don't want to say impossible, but it's, from what we've seen, no one's been able to do it other than Tesla in scale yet in, in the United States of America. No one's done it. Not one company has done it in North America yet. Think about that for a moment. So until it's proven that other companies can really do this, you, you, you're, you're just on, on hopes and wishes, right? I mean, that's, that's all it is at this point in time. So in my opinion, in regards to Tesla, it represents actually a really good value right now. Uh, the stock could continue to be in a floundering place here in the short term with obviously macroeconomic weakness, with obviously interest rates being still on the higher side, and obviously with uh, fears about Elon's price war and how far he, he's willing to take this thing. Okay, So, you know, uh, it's an interesting year to uh, be a buyer of obviously Tesla. Okay. Palantir stock. So Palantir, this one's down 7% in just the past five days in regards to Palantir, right? So in regards to Palantir, we're less than two weeks away from the earnings. Now, I think there could be some worries in regards to Palantir in regards to their earnings, right? Because they, they've had one quarter of, uh, you know, what is seen as profitability. But people are, have concerns about, can they really replicate that? Can they have a profitable quarter in the March quarter and then the June quarter and continue to put this on? And Alex Karp, 
hasn't really committed to every quarter being profitable. Alex Karp committed to, on a yearly basis, being profitable for Palantir moving forward. But he is not committed to on a every quarter basis. And so that leaves the door open to maybe, you know, Palantir is going to disappoint and report a quarter of, of non-profitability in an EPS loss or something like that, right? So it creates concerns out there. And so I think that's something that's weighing on the stock. The other thing is weighing on the stock is just low revenue expectations. You know, the way I look at this is I actually love this, okay? The, the revenue expectations are on the floor for this company. They only have them doing 13% revenue growth in the March quarter. 13%, and this is the quarter, by the way, they're about to report here in the next two weeks, right? Less than two weeks from now. And they have them doing 13% growth in the June quarter. Those numbers are incredibly low, incredibly low for Palantir here, folks. And so when I look at this one, based upon Carp's interview recently that was on CNBC a few weeks ago that I reacted to on my reaction channel, right? I mean, the way I look at this is I think there's a possibility that they could easily actually beat these numbers. We'll see what happens. I think it's definitely a potential. And if they do do that, obviously, we know what's going to happen with the stock price. If they can come in and report much better revenue growth, because revenue growth has really been the thing that's freaked people out. I'll be honest. Uh, the revenue growth going from 30% to now analysts are expecting 13%. That's freaked a lot of people out of their stock. The EPS is one thing, but it, this is the bigger thing, in my opinion, revenue growth. So... I'm excited, actually, for these earnings for Palantir because they're going in with such low expectations. And with the, if we can go in with the stock price in the sevens or eights into this earnings, I'm feeling I'm feeling very good about that whole situation. With that being said, though, I do actually want Palantir's stock price to stay lower for honestly this entire year. So I would be happy as long as the stock price stays under ten dollars for this entire year because this is like an Amazon. It's a position I want to build into as this year kind of ticks on here. So you know, although I'm fairly confident in, in earnings, I'm actually hoping the stock price stays in a lower range for this entire year. So that's kind of my thoughts on that in regards to Palantir. Uh, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that as always there. Okay. Uh, I want to make sure everybody is aware of this or understands that unless you're grandfathered into the buy the dip and never trip tier for Patreon, we're going to be taking that away here very soon. And so if you want to get access to that, you'll definitely want to check out the pinned comment down there and get in there ASAP. Whoever's grandfathered in when we take that away here very soon, you you'll you know, be able to stay in that tier. And whoever's not, obviously, it's going bye-bye. And then we're just going to have this $19 tier uh, moving forward here, which is obviously to see my moves in the market and uh, have uh, access to the Discord chat, okay? So if you want to take advantage of that before we take it away, check out the pinned comment down there. Much love as always. Thanks for being subscribed and have a great day.